Hi, Pikachu Gaijin here, Jamaican YouTuber. Welcome back to my channel, Teaching in Japan While Black is the title of this video. And, you know, obviously, as the title says, it's going to share my experience as a black person teaching here in Japan. For the past six years, I've been here struggling, getting better, sometimes doing worse, but always trying to be better than the day, I, the day before. Always trying to make sure I can teach my kids not only English, but also life lessons and how, you know, I make them into global citizens because, you know, Japan is just a very small dot on the map compared to the entire world, the globe, the universe in general. Now, we also have to understand how Japan sees English. English is seen as an extracurricular activity, basically. It's not deemed necessary, to be honest. And so a lot of kids here in Japan, especially those that come to my company to do English, because it's after school, not in the public school setting. I teach the kids by myself. There's no one there with me. For one hour, some of these kids just want to hang out with their friends and just want to relax, take a break from school, whatever it is. So for that reason, as a teacher in the Eikaiwa, my situation is totally different from those in the public school. And you'll find that in this video going forward. I have taught in the IJ prefecture and also in currently teaching the Chiba prefecture. And I can tell you that there is a difference in how children behave based on their location in relation to a city and in relation to the, let's say, the financial stability of that city or financial security of that city prefecture, etc. The experience of a black person in Japan is similar but very different from, a, of, from other foreigners that are in Japan. When I go to teach, when students see me for the first time, they see someone with a different skin color, they see someone who is much bigger than them, and I mean much bigger than them, someone that's taller than them, and someone with a beard, so most times. And some of those things may be scary for somebody who has not interacted with a foreigner before. So therefore, as a black person, as a Jamaican, I am automatically an ambassador for my country, and I represent the collective. And so I have to be on my P's and Q's around these kids. Now, in the Ikawa setting, the customer has the power. The children, some of them know this and act out like they know that nothing can be done to them because, you know, if they complain to their parents, they can get the teacher in trouble. The teacher will be reprimanded by the supervisor and or company and, you know, things may head south soon. So basically, my role is to manage the kids' expectation while meeting the parents' expectation, while managing my company's expectation and my expectation. So basically, it's a lot of expectation going on and a lot of stuff that you have to manage. All right? Cool. One of the things that will make your life easier is understanding some Japanese. I, it goes without saying, but listen, a lot of companies insist that you don't need Japanese. Yes, they're right, you don't need it, <laughs> but it is an asset to you in helping to manage and control a class, to prevent bullying, to also establish yourself as a teacher in the classroom and knowing that you will nip out little things in the bud before they get to bigger problems you can't handle. What I'd recommend is that persons who are coming to Japan or persons who are in Japan now learn all the bad, mean, rude words that Japanese kids say and use and their meanings, context, nuances and whatever. Like if a kid says to you, oh my wa, you know he's not speaking to you in a respectful manner. Okay, that's just a tip. So tell him, no, no, I'm not your friend. I'm not your size. I'm not your colleague. I am your teacher. I'm not your mother or father either because some of these kids speak to their mother and I have to clutch my pearls proverbially. 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 I have to... Make I have to clutch my imaginary pearls. Why am I clutching pearls? Well, I have to be in a state of shock to see these kids speak to their mother. You, anyways. All right. So in understanding what they're saying, you're able to act or not react depending on the situation. Now, a lot of these kids want attention that they don't really get at home. So you have to be mindful and balance and see what works. There is no cookie cut method in managing these classes or teaching English here in Japan. But there are a few things you can try to see what works. And once it works, you run with it and kill it until it's dead. All right. Another thing that I've noticed is that you need to understand how the students learn here in Japan. The way that they learn in Japan is not the same as you would have learned growing up in your country. Remember, you're also teaching them a foreign language. So how they have been trained to learn and to receive information if you can master that and get it in a way that they can understand and it's easy for them to reproduce the English, then it will make your life a lot easier teaching in Japan. And I have found that over the years, you usually get better if you care. Because there are different ways children learn. You have the audio learners, you have the kinetic learners, you have the visual learners, you have, the, uh, you have those that have the mixture of it. You know what I mean? So 
you just have to know if you're really interested in teaching and becoming a better teacher then and making your kids happy and you know making the parents happy as well then that would be a good avenue to look at you know to keep learning and finding new interesting activities and that sort of thing to keep them engaged and then make your life easier while teaching in japan back to the point of my appearance because of my skin color it's strange for a lot of these kids because Japan is a homogenous country. But a lot of stereotypes are being perpetuated and fed by the media, which are then passed down from the parents to the children. So my first impression to many of these kids is that this is a scary foreigner, he's going to eat me, or he is bad. But usually after the first two lessons, I say two lessons, and the kids have seen me in action and how I'm very soft and kind and genteel, and I'm funny and vibesy and genki and that sort of thing they usually come around there are some cases that kids have cried every time they've seen me for one year and 12 months that's all sorry for one year and six months there's one girl in particular that cried for almost two years every time she came into my lesson then eventually she she liked me daisuke sensei andre sensei daisuke i'm like finally it took you long enough shoot but that's beyond the point a lot of this, a lot of patience is required in teaching anywhere in the world. And then teaching kids in a language that they are not familiar with, and you are not familiar with their language, is a whole lot of hospitals, sorry, a whole lot of patience will be required of you. <sighs> Trust me, it's not an easy road. For me, because I work in an AKI, which is a private company that has nothing to do with schools, also needs me to show a different level of customer service that's not required by my ALT colleagues in the public school. So I have to demonstrate what their kids learn in the lessons, give them updates on their kids' progress. Not really, but I, I, t I do that now that I'm a, senior, I'm a senior teacher, that I've been here a while. I know the parents, I talk to them and tell them, hey, you know, today he was good, today he wasn't that good. Today he said this really well, or she did this really well, and so he has good job. And you build a rapport with the parents, they begin to trust you more because they leave your, they they are not anywhere near their child for a whole hour and leave them with you. So the fact that if you're able to build a rapport with the parents as well, it will make life easier when it comes to like helping to manage the kids and just showing genuine care. Find out what your children like, you know, try and tell your lesson if you can to things that they like and you probably keep them more engaged and interested. And you know what's funny, while teaching in Japan as a black man, you have the opportunity to teach people that a lot of the things that have been said about us as a race are not particularly true a lot of them are special cases that have been exaggerated so you know that's really it we have to just be just be on our p's and q's all the time we're not allowed to almost be individuals we can't you know because we have to represent our country and our race which sometimes can be a burden but it's always a pleasure for me <sighs> Yeah, so yeah, that's it. Basically, the six years I've been in Japan, that's what I've learned and realized will make a better, make your time better. Um, if you have any other tips that you might want to share about teaching in Japan, you can put in the comments down below. What works for you? What are your classroom management techniques that you use to keep the kids in line? Those sort of things. I can do videos about that, have discussions. Just want to see, you know, this is what I felt like would be a good video to do. Anyway, see you in the next video. Pickles the Garage in Jamaica, YouTuber. Ikimashou!